Hi, this is Jimmy with Trailerhead. Today I'm going to cover greasing the rails on the HD5 gantry. Uh, this happens to be a HD4 that I've upgraded the gantry to HD5. Uh, there's been some confusion and hard to find tools to be able to grease these rails. Uh, I finally located and got a hold of the right tools, so I'm going to go through setting up the grease gun and we're actually going to go through greasing these rails up. And what we're talking about are your Z rails uh, for your, you know, Z axis going up and down and also your X, the ones that go back left and right. Uh, those are over here in these little bitty holes back in here. So a uh, little bit hard to get to, but the tool I have will reach back in there. Uh, like I said, the tool has been kind of difficult to find. I did finally find a company that has one, uh, has the right diameter hole in it, it works well. So what we have is um, Next Waves document has information as far as getting a hold of a grease gun. Uh, that's from Harbor Freight. Uh, the grease itself is from Granger. It's a mobile grease. It's the EP1 series, uh, which is the right thickness grease uh, to stay in the bearings. And the hard to find part, the unicorn, has been this little tip. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit and uh, see if I can give you the tip on it. Uh, this one is small enough to depress in the ball bearings on the fittings and then let the uh, grease go in. So, like I said, the, the grease gun is a mini grease gun from Harbor Freight. Uh, that's the one listed in the manual that Next Wave Automation has for greasing the HD5. Uh, it does come with a hard extension uh, which screws in here and I opted to get a longer, there's a 12 inch flex. That way when you're back in that X gantry you can actually get it back in there and not have to worry about trying to get the gun you know, back in there with it. You can just work with the, the tip itself. Uh, so that's the main reason why I went that way. Uh, when I put the, uh, the thread and everything up, I went ahead and used uh, thread tape so I can get it tightened up. Also on this gun this spring gets in the way when you're trying to get this nut tightened up on this hose so what i ended up doing is drilling out the rivet that they had in there and when you do that this spring tension will pop this all out so be careful of that uh, but once you get this in there tight everything's good you can just put it back in put a bolt or you know in this case i had a little uh, pop rivet so i put that in there and uh, it seems to work just fine uh, so what we're going to do is, like I said, we'll go through and I'm going to prime the gun as far as the, the grease into the chamber and then uh, we'll make sure that we're getting it out the tip before we go over to the machine. So on our mobile grease, this is designed to go in a full-size grease gun and uh, cartridge ready. So basically in those type of grease guns, you take off the barrel. screw the barrel your cylinders all the way up so you pull it all the way back and this one's self-locking so it's pulled all the way back once you get the barrel off uh, what we're going to do is fill this up with grease uh, the cartridge that came with it has the wrong type of grease for, for our application it has a, a what i would call a level two which is not as thick of a grease uh, so this cartridge i'm actually going to discard because uh, i don't need it uh, around because uh, I'm not going to change this grease out once it's loaded. Uh, but the way the cartridges work, if we had a full-size grease gun instead of the mini, even with this cartridge, you take out the end cap, which has grease, then basically you just slide it in, and you know, all the way up, you pull the full off, and then get it screwed back in, then prime the air out of it, and you're ready to go. In our case, since we have a full-size cartridge, we're not going to be able to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with grease from here. Let's see, and there's our grease. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get my pair of gloves on, and then we're going to grease this up. 
Okay, we have uh, gloves, I've got a couple paper towels, because I'm gonna need to clean up everything on this once it's loaded. So basically what you do is as you push it down into the grease, and you can do this if you have a five gallon bucket of grease, is how they do it, and uh, garages and everything else. So as you pull this up, it's gonna suck it in there, and as you do so, you push it further down into your bucket, or in this case, the tube, and then once it's done, we'll pull it out. And if you notice, it's all the way up in there. So what we'll do is we'll clean this up the best we can. And you can use, you know, a piece of wood, whatever. In this case, I don't want to contaminate the grease, so I'm just gonna use my finger since I got gloves on. Wipe off as much of this as I can get back in the cartridge. That way we can use it later. And that's packed fairly well tight, so that, that actually looks very well. All right. So we'll seal this up for later. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this ready to prime the cartridge. Um, on your inside of this, this is the inlet side for it. And what it does is it lets the grease up in there via the spring. And then as you move the plunger in and out, it actually pumps it out the tube. There's a rubber seal in here, which helps with it. So what we'll do is we'll take it all the way up. And once it's tight, we're gonna back it off a couple of rounds, just so it kind of wiggles around a little bit. So that way when we let this go, it's gonna let most of the air out. And we're looking for grease to start to come out, and that way we know the air's out of it. So what we'll do is we'll pick it up, let it go down. Yeah, it's going to press and go down. All right. So that goes all the way down through the plunger. Now it's all spring loaded. Yeah, it should be. And as you move back and forth, the air comes in and out. All right. So that should be pretty close to having the air out of it. As we tighten it up, you see the little grease came out. So that means this uh, air is evacuated. So we'll just clean this up the best we can. So with that cleaned up, if we start pumping on this, we should start getting it out of our tip. Uh, so I'm going to do this the best I can, see if we can... Uh, and I feel the difference in the handle via the pump, so we'll see. Oh, there it comes. So I don't know if you can see that or not. What I have is uh, an old paint swatch. Uh, just, you know, I was looking for colors and stuff, but uh, it'll work for our purpose today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this tip. All right. So with one pump, this will expel this much grease out of it. So. That's one pump, I'm holding it in. I'll let go of it. So if you look, it's a fair amount of grease. So in our application, um, probably one pump, half a pump to one pump, will probably fill that bearing up enough to get it to start transporting across the bearings. Uh, once we start moving it on the machine. So I've already greased it once, but like I said, my hand was in the way, so I'm going to do this again so that you're able to see the actual uh, pin going into these. Um, all right, so this will be the second pump for these. And like I said, this needle is perfect. It's, it's on the bearing. You can feel it, and then it just slightly depresses. And like I said, we're going to squeeze this. I don't want to go too hard on it. So that's one. And a little bit more resistance on this one. So, so I'm just going to do two on each one, and that thing's going to ooze out all over the place. I did. So it would benefit you to wait before pulling it off of there. And that uh, remainder of that pressure to get out of there. So this would be one.
to. Alright, so like I said, we'll wait just a minute and then I'm going to pull this off. And let the rest of that flow in there before taking it off. There we go. So there was a little bit of back pressure on that, so that kind of tells me that that was rather full. Uh, so I'm going to clean the grease up off of these best we can. You know, clean up in the bowl once we get completely done with it. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this up and down uh, a few more times. So effectively, I have, I've put three applications within this. Uh, for the amount of grease that came out on the test bench, um, I have a feeling that's going to be some, uh, a good bit of grease in there for now. I'm going to try that and see. Uh, what made me want to even start checking this is as my X or Z axis was running up and down, I was starting to hear noise in the bearings. Um, uh, even though the router is running, you know, I could still pick up a, a bumping type noise and things like that. Could be loose couplers, there's lots of different things that can cause it, but if you put your hand on it, as it's moving up and down, even though the coupler is already engaged, you still feel it. Uh, so to me, that tells me it's a bearing. Uh, so I need to get them greased up. So we're going to swing around, and we're going to work on getting the x-axis bearings greased up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these rails, and then get everything set, and then we'll grease those. So now we're going to come around, and we're going to work on getting in here to grease these fittings up um, on the x-axis. Uh, now these fittings are in there, uh, for those of you that don't have the HD5, uh, you can kind of see it back there. Uh, this adapter that we have will reach all the way back there, I've already verified that. Uh, the only problem we'll have is trying to clean that up once we get done. Uh, we don't want any grease globbing on it, because over time it may just drip off onto our work surface, uh, either our wasteboard or even something that we're cutting, and uh, just make a big mess. So we'll make sure we get that cleaned up as we go. And then uh, we'll go back to uh, business. Now this is the reason why I have a flex cable. Because if I use that hard cable that I had, I would not be able to get back here to this. Luckily this one up here you can see. Yeah, luckily with the this little ball bearing on this adapter. If you get lined up, you will feel it. And it will push in, you'll feel it. Push in. Now the, I've heard recommended hours for this has been like 30 working hours or something like that, and then you need to grease it again. So we need to get verification on that. Um, but other than that, that's all there is to doing this. So I got everything greased up. Now one thing I found in order to clean these off inside this little cavity, uh, there's a couple places you can get to it. And one thing I'm using is a extension for my uh, torque driver. And just wrap, you know, paper towel around or something. And I've already cleaned this, but I'm gonna show you. Is if you go in from the top back, you can actually get your finger down in this one and get it, get it clean. One on the bottom, you can almost do it, but it's not quite as easy. Uh, but you can take that tool and wrap a paper towel around it, get it down in there and get it cleaned out. All right, just a quick tip on your end piece and the grease gun. Once you get done with it, go ahead and take the adapter piece off. There's a little ball bearing at the end of the fitting on the grease gun hose that keeps any more grease from coming out. Uh, if this is on there, it will slowly ooze out over time uh, due to just residual pressure. All right, now that we're done, uh, I can get back to cutting. I will be posting where I've got all the tools for this, uh, the different parts of it, uh, the tip in particular, the grease and everything. I'll also send the list up to Next Wave so they can cascade it out on their document, uh, make life a little easier for everybody or any new people that are getting this machine. So hopefully you all have a good day. This is Jimmy with Trailer Head. Thank you.